This video has the potential to possibly be the most confusing video about machine guns that you've ever seen. If you stick with me, it also has the potential to be the most enlightening video on how to own machine guns that you've ever seen. This is something that a lot of you folks have asked me to do over the years, and I think that it's due time that we do it right now. Let's all get up to speed on machine guns, how you can own one of these, what the process is, which ones we can't own, and how to look at a table full of firearms that depending on how you own it could either be a nice collection or a potential felony. So there's a lot of bad information out here, um, not just on the internet, but, but in general. You find it in gun shops, you find it at gun shows, everywhere, uh, pertaining to the ownership of machine guns. And it's done nothing but become more confusing in, in years past. So let's start at the beginning, and, and so we're all on the same page. Machine gun ownership is not illegal in the United States. If you can generally own a pistol, you can own a machine gun legally. Now, the hitch is, as of May 19, 1986, Congress banned the manufacture, the new manufacture of machine guns for individual ownership. So, as of May 19th, the supply was shut off. It was due to an amendment, the Hughes Amendment, on the Gun Owner Protection Act, and it was one of those midnight voice votes. You can look it up online, Hughes Amendment. It was, it was horribly upside down. The, uh, they, the, the people that were in the room, the few people that were, did not vote for it, but leadership at the time said, absolutely, the bill passes. So that's something we've got to argue about and fix at another time. For right now, I just want to go into what we do know. And, and machine guns have been banned for manufacture for individual ownership as of May 19, 1986. So that's a pretty simple explanation of why they're as expensive as they are. As of the making of this video, we've got about six more days before the 30-year anniversary since any have been manufactured. So because of the basic laws of supply and demand, the prices are through the roof. A regular AR-15 prior to May 19th of 1986 used to be the same price as an M16. They, they didn't care. They could make another one and sell it, transfer it out. Because the inventory is closed off, we're dealing with a finite inventory and an infinite amount of interest, so the prices have nowhere to go but up. In regards to federal law, there is no machine gun license, there is no machine gun permit. What there is is a transfer. When you purchase a machine gun, the title to it, just like an automobile, is transferred to you. The title fee is $200, and that's the part that most people confuse for a license or a permit, but it is not. It's nothing that you have to renew every year. You're not transferring the title every year, you only do it once. You don't have to let anyone into your home to inspect your firearms. Nobody cares you have them. They're your legally owned firearms. So there, there are not problems with giving up our Fourth Amendment. There are not continued licensing fees that we have to follow along. It's just a title transfer. Now where it gets confusing, and I absolutely understand the confusion, is when some dub like me introduces a new firearm that you and I both know has only been manufactured for months, and I'm shooting it full auto. Now, there are a few different ways that we can do that. There are sears and conversion devices that are registered as transferable machine guns. They were manufactured and registered before May 19th of 1986. These transfer just like any other machine gun. And then it doesn't matter, as long as it's in the same firearms family, it doesn't matter what you use for a host for this conversion device. Like I'll use quite often a POF USA P416. Um, these were not made prior to 1986. But the sear inside, as long as you have one of those, you can buy one that was manufactured yesterday and use that sear. And this is no more than the host legally. 
So that should help clear up a little bit of confusion. Now these conversion devices and these sears are just as expensive as any other machine gun. Their numbers were locked off too. They're actually included in the number of machine guns that are available for transfer. So there are no inexpensive ways left. Everything is very, very expensive if you want to own one. Something else that adds to the confusion is the existence of what are classified as post-86 dealer samples. That is when a, a licensed machine gun manufacturer makes a new machine gun to demonstrate to the military, to law enforcement, to government entities, uh, this new design. That is not illegal. Somebody that's licensed as a, an NFA dealer or manufacturer can still have machine guns that were manufactured after May 19th of 1986. The caveat is you have to keep that license up. It has to be a current license. If you get a if you get a license to deal machine guns and manufacture machine guns and you either make or purchase some, when you give that license up, the possession is restricted to you keeping that license intact. So they would have to be transferred to someone else that's qualified to have them. So that's the vast majority of the guns that you see that are newer firearms. They're either guns that someone is using a registered machine gun conversion device with and using the firearm itself as the host, or it's a post-86 dealer sample that someone that is an NFA firearms manufacturer made as a, as a demo firearm. So manufacturing a machine gun happens at the point where you, on an, M, on an M16, we'll stick with M16s today to keep it easy, and AR-15s, the point where you drill a hole in the receiver to accommodate a factory auto sear, that's manufacturing a machine gun. At that point, you can use all of the factory M16 parts, drop it in and it runs. The only way to legally do that today is, is to be a, an 07 FFL or an NFA firearms manufacturer. With a drop-in auto sear, that works exactly like the factory sear that we've gotten to know with the military firearms works without having to drill a hole in the receiver. Because even if you still, even if you had one of those drop-in auto sears, you still couldn't drill a hole in the receiver because that would be manufacturing a new machine gun under their guidelines. So the auto sear actually drops in the receiver and it has a pivot pin that's held in place with the rear takedown lug from the upper receiver once it's sitting inside and it pivots just like the factory sear does without having to drill the hole. The drop-in works the same as the factory sear does. The other sear that's out there is called a lightning link. And the lightning link looks more like a little paddle or a can opener. That slides into the receiver and has a separate paddle that comes up the rear of that takedown lug and works in conjunction with a semi-auto parts kit. If there are any full auto parts in it, it won't work at all. It's meant to be used with a, with a semi-auto parts kit only. And those are just as expensive as a registered receiver or a drop-in auto sear at this point. Everything is a ridiculous amount of money. There are no, no easy ways to get involved financially anymore. So what do we have for options? Well, you'll notice Slide Fire Industries several years ago came out with a bump stock. There are a few other companies that have, have uh, come up with offerings in the meantime, but they all work on the same principle. And you might ask why those are legal, and it's because the definition of a machine gun is a firearm that fires more than one round with a single pull of the trigger. The slide fire stock uh, and, and all of its, its, its recent configurations requires a separate pull of the trigger for each round to be fired. And if you look at it in slow motion, when somebody's using one, even though it outwardly sounds like a machine gun and the downrange effect is, is pretty much the same, the rifle is sliding back and forth inside of that stock and there is a separate trigger pull for each round being fired. I know it sounds ridiculous, I don't make the rules, I'm just helping to explain what they are. And from a distance, the slide fire might look like it's performing the same as the machine gun, but once you zoom in a little bit, you can clearly see the rifle moving back and forth, giving you only one shot each pull of the trigger. So I hope that that 
helps to explain a little bit of the confusion away from the things that you might see online or read in magazine articles where it's not explained from the beginning all of the time. Sometimes we assume that everybody's kind of in tune with this stuff as much as, as, as we are and we've all got our things that we, you know, that we really follow close and track on and it's good to share that information. We'll, uh, there, there's just as ridiculous uh, a situation with in regards to pistols and short barreled rifles and, and any other weapons and things of that nature. And we'll follow this video up sometime in the very near future with something on helping explain why something may be a pistol and not a short barreled rifle when outwardly they look almost identical. Um, but we'll save that for another time very soon. So, so I hope you enjoyed this quick video to help explain a little bit about the things that you see in print and online uh, and they make a little bit more sense now. If you did, please click like, share us with your friends in your vast social media universe, uh, subscribe to the channel if you don't already, and until next time, have fun and be safe.